Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I have a kind of a brief mini review in my gouache, artist quality gouache uh, review series that I've been working through here on my YouTube channel. I do wanna caveat this review with the fact that the paints I'm going to review, I've had in my stash for about 10 years and the company that I'm reviewing has been bought and sold since then, I'm told. So we're gonna be looking at the M. Graham gouache today. As you may know, M. Graham is my favorite watercolor brand. I've been using them for decades, over two decades and um, I'm really happy with them and I've purchased tubes of their watercolor over the years and I haven't noticed any declining quality although they have changed some formulations or some recipes or pigment combinations over the years but I haven't noticed a problem in any of the paints that I have um, and if you were to buy the mixing set today of M. Grimm it would set you back about $48 on Amazon I think it might be a couple bucks different on Blick I can't remember in which direction but um, if you were to buy the mixing set today you would get Azo yellow for your primary yellow, you would get naphthol red for your primary red, and you would get cobalt blue for your primary blue, plus black and white. And what I have here is pyrrole red for my primary red, Hansi yellow for my primary yellow, and cobalt blue for my primary blue. I also have burnt sienna, permanent green light, and cadmium orange. And this may seem like a bizarre combination of colors, and it kind of is. And the reason for that is that M. Graham sent me these paints back when I did a, uh, I did a fundraiser, I painted something for charity and I used their paints and they sent me these gouache paints kind of as a thank you for using their product. Um, and I put my paints in an old portable painter here and I squeezed these out about, um, probably about four or five days ago and they're still nice and moist. They haven't hardened up at all. They are fairly uh, decently thick consistency. I have panned these before and put them in watercolor palettes to have some gouache to go with my watercolor and they do re-wet well from dry and that's how I have used them for the most part over the past 10 years. But I thought I would do the, do kind of like a, um, a traditional painting from wet paint uh, demonstration or do a few, a few of these like that just so I would have kind of apples to apples comparison from the Daniel Smith and the Holbein that I've already used. So uh, without further ado, let's show you some artwork here. I, oh, and I added a Daniel Smith white and just a uh, Lucas yellow ochre there because it's kind of an odd selection of colors, not the best mixing arrangement I have. Um, and I wanted to, I needed a white for one thing for if I'm gonna do gouache and I love to have yellow ochre so I thought I would just add that to there. So just big caveat there. Um, it's not gonna be as pure as my Daniel Smith review and my um, Holbein re review which were just using brand new fresh recently purchased paints. Um, so this is the first painting I did with the gouache fresh from the tube and this was a little landscape or yeah, landscape at Craig's Pond I did on location on uh, Art Creations Cellulose uh, sketchbook. And then I did this also on location, these rocks by the water. And I was really happy with the way it turned out. I really enjoyed using them and a little went a long way, which is really good. And then I just painted this one today. This is from a, ref a still life I set up and took a reference photo of. I was actually gonna sit outside and paint it, but the uh, it kept sprinkling, so I brought it in. And um, there may be a video of this on my YouTube channel. Maybe, maybe not, I'm not sure. I did film it. So if I've gotten edited by now, then it's there. If not, you can let me know if you want to see it. I may add some color pencil on top because I feel like the colors just are not as vibrant uh, as I want. And because um, the red and blue in my primary set, they didn't make a really good purple. And honestly, I don't think the red and blue that are in, because they use naphthol red instead of pyrrole red, I don't think it's going to make a great purple either. Um, so that's something to just kind of kind of think about. Price-wise, they're about the same as Daniel Smith. Um, the Holbein has been a great deal. I don't know if it still will be when I'm recording this, but at the time of recording, the you get the mixing set of Holbein for uh, $25 and change, and I think that's a much better mixing set because you have cool primaries, and those will just mix infinitely more um, more options. In fact, I think I'm going to add my Holbein mixing colors to this kit so that I have more range. Um, in my mixing. So I'll be definitely adding the, um, I might even add uh, the Daniel Smith blue to this, um, almost instead of the cobalt, but I definitely, I would definitely prefer the ultramarine blue to the cobalt because it's just stronger. So, I mean, honestly, I think you could use the Daniel Smith and the M. Graham pretty interchangeably. If you want to go for one mixing set though, I'm still going to say Holbein's mixing set is the best out of those three and it's the most affordable and I just feel like you get the most options, but this is definitely a, a good quality paint. Um, and I would put it, I'd put it on par to Daniel Smith, but I have to say in the instance of, of gouache, 
I enjoyed using the Daniel Smith and the Holbein more than the M. Grimm, which really surprised me. And I'm not sure why exactly. I think it's the color selection. Honestly, I think quality-wise they're all pretty comparable, but I think it was probably just the color selection. And I'll just show you a couple of those other brands of gouache. Um, this was the Holbein, and you can see you get a really rich variety of colors, and these are your mixing primaries there, plus black and white. And then um, that was Holbein as well. And then, let's see, what did I do with the Daniel Smith? Um, this was Daniel Smith right here, and that was Daniel Smith. And the pro the uh, issue I had with the Daniel Smith was that it didn't have the cool primaries. Kind of the same thing with the um, with the M. Graham. Uh, so, and they don't offer a cool primary blue, which is too bad. So, it's just kind of those things, you, honestly, you could pick and mix and match and pick the favorite colors from, from whatever brand you want and make your custom perfect palette. So, there's nothing wrong with, it, with doing that. And all of these brands offer open stock, so you're not stuck with what's in a set if you want to pick and choose what colors that you want, that you have. Um, but I like the opacity with the M. Graham. I like the opacity with um, with the Daniel Smith. The, the whole bind seems to be a little less opaque, but honestly, for mixing and layering, it worked great. This was the um, titanium class Mission, uh, Magello Mission titanium class gouache that's kind of a hybrid. That was fun to use, but I almost don't even want to call it gouache because it doesn't really feel gouache enough for me. But anyway, um, I just wanted to put that out there. If you were thinking about trying some M. Graham gouache, um, I would say, yeah, there it's good paint. There's nothing wrong with it. It's great. Um, try a tube or two and see what you think. And... Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Like I said, my paints are older, so I want to caveat that review. Uh, of course, you could go online and search more recent reviews, or even check out Blick, always has customer reviews there. Uh, so I would definitely recommend doing that, and not just taking my word for it, since I am using older stock. And to be honest, I'm not as particular with gouache as I am with watercolors, because I find that there's less of a, there's less of a range in gouache and quality. Um, some cheaper gouaches perform really well, some expensive all the expensive gouaches seems to perform really well, but there's not as much of a variation as you would get from cheaper watercolors and more expensive watercolors. So uh, that's my brief uh, assessment of M. Graham gouache. I hope you found it useful, and uh, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.